everybody, this is Stephanie from Razzle Dazzle Rabbitry and Yarns LLC. Today's video is how to wash and dry Gotland lamb wool without felting. We purchased this wool and we were interested in possibly purchasing a sheep named Steve, but we did not. We This is Steve's mom and the fleece that we have is from Kelly. So feel free to contact her for this good Gotland fleece. We have our kitchen sink that we're using to wash our Gotland lamb wool. This was a very well skirted fleece. I didn't have to do any skirting whatsoever. There was hardly any vegetable matter in this. It was a very, very good fleece. Excellent staple length, just absolutely beautiful. So we're gonna start out and we're running our water as hot as possible. And we do have the water heater turned all the way up. So this is very hot water. We're adding uh, gentle baby soap and there's two different kinds of baby soap I was adding because I ran out of one. So baby wash. You're going to start out and just cover most of the sink with wool. That's the amount that we wash at once. So at this point, the water was way too hot to keep my hands in it. We let it soak for only about five minutes. And then we put our gloves on because when the water's hot, this is just easier. These gloves offer insulation. Let the drain out. Pick all your wool up. Rinse with the same temperature hot water. And we're just holding it in our hands to rinse. We'll give it a squeeze. What we're looking for is we're looking for the water that we squeeze out to be completely clear as much as possible. And we really don't want to smell a sheepy smell to our wool. And this wasn't a very sheepy smelling fleece to begin with. So we're going to add a lot more soap, a lot more wash. And if you notice, I wait till the water is there. I'm not agitating the fleece. And then I just simply spin it, make sure it's all covered. And we're going to let it sit for a little bit longer. Just about five minutes again. Time to rinse. Put our gloves back on. We're going to take everything, just gently moving it along. We don't want any felting. Let the water out. And we're going to use the side of the sink to help contain the wool, help it not drain, and to also squeeze it a little bit. So here we go, rinsing off for the final time. You can see the water is pretty much clear. We're going to squeeze it. A bit of debris still coming out that you can barely see. We do plan on washing the yarn that we make with this wool afterwards as well, so it is going to get washed again. And now it's time to move to our drying racks. So the wool is still hot. It will still retain heat. We keep our gloves on. And we spread this out quite thin because it's summer, it's humid, and even though we have central air, we do not want the wool to have a musty smell if wool is sitting on your drying rack and it's not getting enough airflow, if there's too much humidity, if the wool is just too, in too big of clumps, you may notice a musty smell. And that is unfortunate because then you just have to rewash your wool. So there's a lot of space, a lot of air in between these. And we just let it dry overnight. And then we bag it up and repeat the process. Subscribe and press the bell for more fiber arts videos. Press the thumbs up to send us good vibes and also listen to our Razzle Dazzle Rabbitry and Yarns LLC podcast for more fiber arts business information as well as a bit more of a personal look. Razzle Dazzle Rabbitry and Yarns.com.